Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're in a 2017 Ford Escape auction lot special. This thing has 128,000 miles on it. And uh, what's the history? Well, the history is never known on these cars. Um, first time I looked at this thing was earlier this year, months ago, for a uh, electronic parking brake issue. It was a broken actuator, uh, the shop here replaced it, recalibrated, that's all good. Now they actually want it to drive well. Well, <laughs> back then, I remember I checked the engine oil and it was like black sludge, it had codes for camshaft, over advanced, over retarded, just a mess. So now that they want me to actually address the engine problem, I told them first and foremost, do an oil change. Oil and filter, so they did that, Test drove it, and they said it still falls on its face. So let's uh, diagnose this Ford. Okay, so engine oil is good, doesn't mean that it hasn't caused any issues when it was neglected, but let's start from scratch and um, verify the customer complaint. I took this thing on a test drive and as you're cruising around the parking lot, no issues. As soon as you give it gas, it'll just poof, limp mode. Like, you get no power, you can't go above 40 miles an hour, and it does set a code. The code is a P0087 fuel rail system pressure too low, bank one. So, a little live data just to save some time. I was graphing the fuel pump, desired pressure, actual rail pressure and the fuel volume control valve. That's the high pressure pump, the little solenoid that um, is controlled by the engine computer. And also the low pressure side is just fine. It goes to 95 PSI in limbo, uh, limp mode and 60 PSI in normal mode. So nothing wrong with the low side pressure. However, check this out. As soon as I really give it the beans, the fuel rail pressure versus the desired pressure. What happens? Right here, the fuel volume control valve hits 100% and it stays at 100%. Look what happens to the actual fuel rail pressure. It drops off a cliff to about what the low side is. So this high pressure fuel pump isn't doing anything when it's commanded 100%. Let's take out one more test drive verify that's our issue and then we have to figure out why is this happening it's in control you know just fine until it hits that hundred percent so it's not it can't keep up with the desired um, fuel rail pressure all right we got some live data pulled up let's fire it up so at idle fuel control valve that's the high pressure pump is at about 10%, seems normal. Long term trim is at minus 14, okay. Short term is correcting about 5, 6%, 7%, that's fine. Low side pressure is 84. It's not fussing about anything at all. Put it under, under some load and gear. Everything's happy, it's keeping up. Now let's take it for a spin. So I can actually recreate this problem in the parking lot. As soon as we punch it, you'll see this shoot up to 100% and watch the actual fuel rail pressure right here in the upper right corner. Okay. So there, it was at 100% for a little while. You saw the fuel trims. We're getting positive. 
And look, now fuel rail pressure is at 72, so the fault happened. We're at 100%, and the fuel rail pressure is basically the same as the low set now. Okay, so now it's stuck in lip mode, and it won't go above 40 miles an hour. Why did that happen? At 100%, why do we have no fuel rail pressure, you know, boost? We shut the key off and restart it. We're back in control. Look. So what do you guys think? Does it need a high, new high pressure fuel pump? I don't know. <laughs> the few times where I've called a bad high pressure fuel pump and it ended up being something else, like either engine mechanical timing because the pump is driven off the camshaft or something silly like a broken um, tap it, you know, follower and the pump isn't being depressed all the way. I think we saw that on a Chevy Equinox. So this pump is pretty easy to remove, so I want to take it off and see what the heck is going on with it. Just do a visual inspection. But there are no other issues with the car. It's not setting any timing codes. It drives great until it hits that wall, and then it falls on its face. So those are the symptoms. What would you do next? Here's a high pressure pump. Nice and easy to access. Take a smell of uh, of this oil. I thought it smelled a little like gasoline. Inconclusive. That's only two screws, so let's uh, crack the high pressure line loose, disconnect it, and uh, take it off. See. See what's going on. So when you're cracking this line loose on a hot engine, and you're gonna have some gasoline spray. So put a rag there, let it hiss. Now we can crack those uh, bolts loose. Okay, bolts are out, flare line is off. Let's see if we can wiggle this guy out of here. Ah, hot. Let's take a peek. Yeah, it looks a little nasty in there. Well, we definitely see a problem. I'm trying to get this follower, tap it out. Do you see that giant hole that it looks like it's just smashed, broken right in the middle? I'm gonna try to get this out. It's, uh, the magnet is only lifting it up a little bit. But is that the camshaft lobe right down there? Something's really broken. But like I said, the high pressure pump itself is probably fine. It's the follower that's messed up. Okay, so almost victory. I hooked it with a pick from the bottom. Just pulled on it and it did pop out almost all the way out. There we go. Oh, yeah. 
that's a problem. See the camshaft, it basically ate a hole through there. So this should fix the car if the cam lobe is okay. We'll take a closer look. Well, I think there's more carnage. The tip of the high pressure pump was also riding on the cam lobe. So basically it looked like this. Yikes. So I would say it does need a new high pressure pump just because this all got shorter. And now the, uh, the plunger won't depress it as much. That's a shame. I think it was all caused to uh, caused by neglected oil changes and this thing just wore out. But I turned the engine over by hand just to take a look at this cam lobe. And it does look pretty hammered. I mean it's still there. So I think that replacing this high pressure pump and the follower will make the car run just fine. And I mean oil changes, oil changes, oil changes. Hopefully it should last a while longer. So at this point I would not replace the camshaft. The tip of the lobe is, yeah, is pretty worn. So a little bonus footage. I looked up a picture of the high pressure fuel pump and see how much the uh, the actual shaft sticks up above this uh, retainer plate. That's all sh it's all been shaved down by the camshaft lobe. So this is all flat, so we need a new pump for sure, because this is extra travel of the pump. Pretty crazy. Um, I don't know if, let me look up that follower, get a picture of that too. So the follower is just this tap it. there's no roller like in the GMs. But you can see there is a kind of a raised surface this is where the shaft contacts that's all been shaved away and just has four holes and it's flat this is where the camshaft lobe rides on this uh, follower so definitely missing some material <laughs> that's for sure so pretty cheap you know 18 bucks for this 200 bucks for the pump should be a fairly affordable repair